Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone welcome to the course on medical biomaterials we will continue on the topic of uh, polymer blends composites we have been discussing about these blends and composites and uh, we will spend uh, some more time on that so let us look at a problem calculate the density of mineral phase of dried cow femur density is 2.06 this is a dried femur okay for example if you take uh, this cow femur it will contain the mineral phase just like hydroxapatite and then there will be an organic phase okay like collagen and then then there will be water okay so the density is uh, 2.06 this femur contains organic mineral and water because it's dried there is no water the density of organic is 1 so organic to mineral is 1 is to 1 so uh, we can use the mixture rules it's quite simple okay so density of the femur is 2.06 okay um, then uh, we have uh, density of organic is 1 into 0.5 density of mineral phase that is what we have to calculate into 0.5 so this is equal to 2.6 this is the density of the femur so we can calculate this from this okay so the density of the femur is equal to um, volume fraction of the organic into density of organic plus volume fraction of the mineral into density of mineral uh, water we have ignored because it is dried so the density of mineral is given as 1.12 gram per cc and um, this problem was taken from this reference uh, let us look at another problem calculate the percentage load borne by the mineral phase of a cow femur subjected to 400 newton okay so as you know it has got a mineral it has got organic and then water so mineral is about uh, 44 percent organic is 40 percent and there is water so water will not take any load so mineral and organic okay uh, Young's modulus of mineral phase is uh, 17 gigapascal Young's model of organic which is collagen it is 0.1 gigapascal so uh, the um, load bone will be proportional to the ratio of the composition that is simple actually okay that will be the ratio of the composition because we will take only the mineral and organic here we will ignore the water part of it okay so load of the mineral phase load borne by the mineral phase divided by load total that will be uh, Young's modulus of low uh, mineral is point I mean sorry 17 gigapascal and um, it is 44 percent so 0.44 into 17 divided by the total 0 0.44 into 17 plus 0.4 into 0.1 you understand this is the total that is 0.4 into 17 plus 0.4 into 1 and then the mineral part of is 0 0.44 into 17 so that gives you 0.9947 that is 99 percent of the load will be borne by the mineral phase okay because the Young's modulus of the mineral phase is so much Young's modulus of the organic phase is very very little so it is assumed that it will be in the same ratio as the Young's modulus and the volume fraction understand so it is quite a simple problem um, so when we have uh, multiple um, materials uh, especially say in um, uh, composites then the load borne by each of the item will be um, based on their Young's modulus respective Young's modulus and their respective volume fraction so you need to remember that okay so composites as you know combination of uh, on a macroscopic level two or more materials different in morphology and physical properties like we are putting um, say uh, silicate and a polymer or carbon um, fibers and a polymer okay or uh, some alumina and some other polymer like that you know two different materials of two different morphologies as well as physical properties for example like I showed you uh, the uh, the um, composite material the, uh, the inorganic may have a very high Young's modulus the polymer may have a very low Young's modulus okay that is the physical property change they exhibit properties that the single constants do not have so obviously it will not be based on the single component but it will be based on their 
um, individual pure values and the ratios. It is tailorable to specific application. So, we can have different compositions of uh, the uh, organic and the uh, inorganic material. Okay. If I am having carbon nanofiber, I can change the composition of the fiber. If I am a glass beads in a polymer, I can change the composition of the glass beads. Okay. So, reinforcement, it provides the mechanical strength matrix that is the polymer binds the reinforcements and distributes the load. So, um, suppose I have 1 percent uh, fiber and I have say 99 percent PMMA, um, then that matrix distributes the load. Okay. Sometimes we need to add additives, fillers to provide speci special attributes. That means, if for mixing say a, the inorganic with the polymer, we may have to add some surfactants, surface active agents or some other hydrophilic polymers and so on actually. That is called additives and fillers. That is how a composite is made up of. Applications catheters, they are used um, silicon rubber reinforced with silica particles. Okay. It provides the silica particles provides improves tear strength and, and reduce wettability. Polymers like PU, LDPE, PVC reinforced with nitinol. Nitinol is a nickel titanium alloy. So, uh, with this we can achieve very, very thin walls, we can have controlled stiffness, high resistance to kinking. Otherwise, if you have just these polymers, the, um, the tubing may get kinked. So, we add uh, this alloy. Cartilage replacement, we can have poly PVA or hydroxy propyl methyl cellulose with silica. This gives you the silica gives very good mechanical properties to the cartilage. Carbon, glass or aramide fibers in thermosetting polymers. Okay. So, a lot of these are added to give strength, uh, to give toughness, it enhances strength, it enhances modulus. Carbon fiber, high stiffness, okay, high tensile strength, low weight high chemical resistance, high temperature tolerance. So, that is why carbon is used quite a lot, carbon reinforced poly ether ketone okay, for bone plate screws, flexural and fatigue properties comparable to that of stainless steel, spine plates and screws. Okay. Whereas, this polymer may be very light, so by adding this carbon we are getting very good uh, uh, flexural fatigue and flexural properties equivalent to stainless steel. Silica glass fiber reinforced PMMA used in dental fillings, okay. um, the fiber gives the toughness. Carbon reinforced polyethylene used in knee prosthesis, okay. there is a lot of attrition, there is a lot of bending, flexural the carbon fiber gives. It gives improved compressive, tensile, elastic modulus, fatigue strength, undergoes less wear, undergoes less percentage deformation even under high stress whereas polyethylene may have higher wear, may have more deformation. Carbon fiber reinforced polysulfone, plates, screws, spinal segmental replacement implants, it is quite semi rigid actually, it is not fully rigid, but it is not soft like this polymer, it could replace metal alloys in orthopedic. The advantage is it could replace and um, they are quite lightweight also. Carbon fiber reinforced bone cement, improved fatigue strength because of the carbon fiber, it reduces the incidence of cement fracture and loosening of the prosthesis. Glass fiber reinforced acrylate, again um, it is very good for dental composites, bone cements, it gives strengthens the fixed partial dentures. Thermoset polymers composites reinforced with glass, carbon, kevlar, prosthetic limbs. So, you see um, these carbon fibers, um, glass fibers they give strength, flexural strength, yield strength. Um, model improvement in modulus, improvement in wear f uh, when you compare polyethylene or uh, um, PMMA type of polymers. Also, they are used quite a lot in medical instrumentation. Carbon fiber reinforced polymer used in tables of MRI CT scanners that gives you strength, that gives you stiffness and of course, they are lightweight. If I am going to use a complete metal, it is going to be very, very, very heavy. So, <coughs> a polymer will be very lightweight we can strengthen it with carbon fiber. Radiolucent, okay. so it will prevent uh, uh, penetration of light wave, radio waves. Non-magnetic to obtain clear sliced images of, whereas if I have some metal, they could start interfering because of their own inherent magnetism. Surgical clamps, headrest frames, x-ray film cassettes, CT scan couches. So, a lot of medical instruments are nowadays being uh, um, um, 
area where uh, metals are getting replaced with the uh, polymer rein reinforced uh, carbon fibers or glass fibers and so on actually because of the light weight. Okay, now uh, we can also achieve uh, good uh, tailored properties by blending uh, polymers, two polymers blended together. Okay. Um, so, we get properties which are not found in individual polymer. One method is there are many methods of these blending, one is called the solution casting, it is a mechanical mixing of polymers and solve, solvents and casting. Melt mixing that means you melt the polymer and um, here we are not using any solvent, but we are melting the polymer at its processing temperature okay, and then mix them. So, the blend morphology depends on the mixing temperature and time here. Whereas, in the previous case you are dissolving the polymer and casting. Co-precipitation, polymers in the blend precipitated simultaneously or spray dried okay, or solid, solid polymer blend. So, you um, blend them together as a co-precipitate. Electro spinning of mixture of polymers, that means uh, we take two polymers in the solution okay, and then um, electro spin it. So, you get loosely connected 3D porous mats with high porosity, high surface area which can mimic extracellular matrix. So, what is this electro spinning? Let us look at the electro spinning process, it is a combination of electrical field and spinning. So, you can spin the polymer, you can spin the polymer um, blend like ions, so we can get a mat of ions. So, what do you do? Um, you take the solution, the mixture of polymers and then um, you force it through the nozzle and then you apply a high electric field here. So, you may have a melt or a solution coming out of the tip of the dye and it has charge. Then you apply another charge on the collector plate. Okay, the leads to the droplet deformation and ejection of charged jet from the tip of the cone. So, it gets accelerated towards the collector electrode leading to the formation of continuous fiber. So, um, you force this melt polymer solution or, or the sol polymer in um, solvent, mixture of polymers in solvent. You apply a high voltage, so the, the droplets which come out um, are charged then you connect the other uh, um, okay, side of the uh, voltage. So, they go and get uh, deposited and collected. Um, okay. So, that is the advantage of this. This is called electro spinning and this is called electro spinning. So, we can get a very nano sized uh, uh, fiber diameter, we can get ions of them and um, it is quite used in wound dressing applications. It is also used uh, when you are trying to make uh, scaffolds because uh, the ions are very small in diameter and they are very porous, okay, many gaps. So, cell growth is very facilitated that is called electro spinning. So, these are different ways by which we can mix polymer and prepare polymer blends. Sometimes we need to add some additives, they are called compatibilizers. Uh, to improve the compatibility of immiscible polymers. You may have a hydrophobic polymer, you may have a hydrophilic polymer. So, we may have to add something sometimes we add PVA which is very hydrophilic. Uh, so, these are called compatibilizer. They improve the interfacial attraction between these two polymers and thus the morphology and the resulting property. So, many times you will see uh, PVA is widely used. So, addition of AB block copolymer for blends of A and B. Addition of linear random copolymer. Random copolymer will be amorphous, it will not be crystalline, so it may blend better with the two immiscible polymer. Interpenetrating polymer blend in network form, one polymer synthesized in the presence of the other. Crow reaction in the blend, like you can do transesterification okay, uh, in the presence of another polymer. So, this can lead to different copolymers. Or we can do cross linking, we have two polymers, then I say I use glutaraldehyde or I use some other cross linking agent, so that there is a um, fixed covalent bond formed between the polymer. Addition of co-solvent, so what you do is immiscible polymers dissolved in a common solvent, after evaporation large interfacial area stabilizes this polymer polymer interaction, that is called the addition of uh, co-solvent. So, many methods are there. Um, they are all called compatibilizers to improve the uh, mixing 
or blending of uh, two polymers. If the blending is not good, you may end up having a heterogeneous um, mixture of polymer A and polymer B um, regions where you may have more of A and uh, less of B and uh, regions where we will have more of B and less of A, which is not desirable. We want a very uniform um, okay, macroscopic uh, mixing of these two polymers. For example, if you look at PVC blends, PVC is widely used, uh, PVC is quite inert, uh, PVC nitrile rubber, nitrile rubber gives the um, very good uh, flexural property. Permanent plasticization, excellent flow physical properties, long term stability, resistance to chemical and oil, good electrical property. This is used uh, oxygen mask, IV tubes, regulator, gloves, so we need good flexibility because PVC is not so flexible by uh, adding this nitrile rubber, you are impairing that. PVC with PMMA gives you toughness, impact resistance, durability, processability. So, they are used in medical equipment, housing, MRI fixtures. PMMA um, has good toughness, uh, PMMA is very transparent, um, it is widely used in dental application. PVC is uh, uh, very inert, okay, have good lubricity, so mixing them they are used in medical equipment. PVC with um, ABS, okay. high res heat resistance, good weatherability, good processability, again in medical instrument. PVC with uh, PCL, clarity, flexibility, toughness used in bags, pouches, tubing, drug delivery. PVA, uh, ethylene, vinylene acetate, clarity, flexibility, bags, pouches, tubing. So, you see even uh, PVC although it is used quite a lot in um, um, medical application, especially in drain tubes, catheters for short duration, uh, it, some of its uh, disadvantages are overcome by adding uh, another polymer uh, to um, improve those properties, okay. uh, especially as you can see a lot of bags, pouches, medical instrument parts, housing, gloves, external, lot of external uh, biomaterials are prepared using this. Other example of blends, uh, polydioxane elastin blend, vascular graft, um, polydioxane gives strength, elastin gives flexibility and bioactivity, so which can be recognized by cells, okay. So, this polymer gives the strength, this gives you the bioactivity and recognition, so it, they are used in vascular grafts. Polyethylene polyurethane blend tempanic membrane replacement, uh, transparent and flexible, the flexibility comes uh, um, from polyurethane, okay. it is got a higher modulus than polyurethane. Silicone PHEMA, okay, lens material because uh, this is anyway used uh, hydroxy, ethyl, methyl, uh, um, okay, acrylate is used in soft contact lenses, um, silicone we are improving the oxygen transmittability as well as uh, it, it gives you stability as well. Polycarbonate polyester, okay. polycarbonate is very strong, rigid, tough. Uh, so, these blend blends are used diagnostic equipment, respiratory therapy devices, um, they are also chemically resistant because polycarbonate is also chemically resistant. So, it becomes very tough polymer. Carboxymethylcellulose. Uh, PVP, polyvinyl pyridone, this is a natural polymer used in wound dressing, um, okay. CMC does not have any strength, so PVP gives the strength, um, okay. So, together they have very good strength as well as flexibility, they have good water uptake enhanced biodegradability. So, you can see PVP carboxymethyl um, is very useful for wound dressing application. So, a uh, lot of examples of plants being used. Um, mixing two polymers together, um, so we can achieve properties uh, which is not available with one single polymer and uh, sometimes we may have to add compatibilizers, that means a, a third polymer which uh, improves their mixing or we can do a cross linking and so on actually. Then we also looked at uh, uh, composites where we are adding an inorganic material, okay, like uh, your uh, glass or carbon fiber on particles into a polymer, so it gives a lot of strength and better elastic modulus, okay. Um, so, 
Uh, Let us look at uh, one or two problems okay, on this topic. A biodegradable polymer when implanted in a rat loses 40 percent of its tensile strength in 10 days and 50 percent of its tensile strength in 20 days. So, how many days it will take to lose 60 percent of its strength? Okay. That is uh, um, quite simple. So, we can assume exponential decay in the biodegradability. So, we can say strength is equal to original strength exponent minus k t, k is a constant, sigma 0 is a strength uh, at time 0. Okay. Uh, so, in 10 days it loses 40 percent, so there will be 60 left behind. In um, 20 days it loses 50 percent, though 50 percent strength left behind. We can calculate uh, sigma 0 and k. And then uh, for the next part of the problem, for a 60 percent loss of strength, what is the time? That is what you have to do. Okay? So, the, you understood the problem. So, uh, first part 40 percent it lost in 10 days, so it's remaining is 6. 0 0.6 is equal to sigma 0 exponent minus 10 k, 10 is your days, 50 percent lost in 20 days, so 0 0.5 sigma 0 exponent minus 20 k. So, k is not known, sigma is not, sigma 0 is not known, two unknowns, two equations, sigma 0 is 0 0.72 k is equal to 0 0.018. Units of k is, units of k is, okay, day inverse, because t is day. Now, um, uh, how many days will it take to lose 60 percent of its strength? That means, 40 percent is left behind 0 0.4, 0 0.72, 0 0.018 t. So, we need to calculate t that is 33 days. It is quite a simple problem, but it is a very interesting um, problem to work at. It gives you a nice idea about um, the main uh, point here is we assume the, um, the biodegradability um, leading to loss in strength follows here exponential type of decay. Okay? That means, it is like a first order loss sigma is equal to sigma 0 exponent minus k t. It might not be true, but it is good enough for, for us to assume, so that we can um, use uh, this equation and the old data to calculate um, for the new unknown. Okay? That is the advantage. So, this um, example was taken from this particular reference. So, I thank uh, um, them. Let us look at another problem and this is related to a composite problem. So, look at this carbon reinforced okay, uh, PMMA, carbon reinforced PMMA um, is prepared for bone fracture application, fracture plate. Okay. So, as you know carbon fiber has very high modulus 250 giga Pascal, PMMA has very, very low 3 giga Pascal look at the density is 1.95, 1.2. Strength of carbon fiber 5000 mega Pascal, um, strength of PMMA is 70. Calculate the amount of fiber required to achieve a modulus of 100 giga Pascal. So, we have two materials um, mixed together for a composite. Uh, we want to achieve 100 giga Pascal. So, we can follow the mixture rules, uh, volume fraction um, of carbon multiplied by 5000 plus volume fraction of PMMA multiplied by 70 will give you 100 and of course, volume fraction of this plus that should be equal to 1. So, we can calculate what should be the amount of fiber to be added, quite simple. Look at this 100 volume fraction of carbon fiber okay, into 250 okay, volume fraction of uh, um, PMMA 1 minus volume fraction of carbon. Okay, into 3. So, we can get from uh, volume fraction for uh, carbon fiber is equal to 0 0.39. So, I need to add 0 0.39 or 39 percent carbon fiber and uh, remaining um, 61 percent PMMA to achieve a modulus of 100 giga Pascal okay? or same thing we can do if you want to look at the strength the same. So, the same volume um, fraction ratio is what it follows and that is called the mixture rules. Next okay, so, we can uh, um, multiply by the corresponding volume fractions okay, uh, to get the overall modulus or if you want to calculate the maximum strength it can take, we can multiply their volume fraction um, to these uh, strength 
and then add them up. The second part of the problem cross sectional area of the bone plate is 1 centimeter square and the fiber diameter is 10 micron. Okay. How many fibers are required? Assume they are aligned in the same direction of the force. So, volume fraction um, of uh, the fiber is 0.39, okay. cross sectional area of bone plate is 1 centimeter square. So, if I assume L as the length of the bone plate, uh, volume of the bone plate will be 1 into L. Okay. I am having a 10 micron diameter. So, if I take, uh, take it as a circular pi d square by 4, it will come okay, multiplied by n, okay, that will be the volume fraction for the fiber, total fiber occupied that will come from here 0.39. Okay. So, from there we can calculate number of fibers. So, volume of one of the bone plate 1 into L, L is the length of the bone plate, volume of the fiber pi 3.41, 3.141 multiplied by radius is phi, pi r square, phi square, this is for converting micron to centimeter, length is the length of the fiber because the um, fiber is along the bone plate, n is the number of fibers we take. So, this will be equal to volume of one fiber area into length multiplied by n fibers. Okay. So, this divided by this should be equal to 0.39 because that will be the total volume fraction of the um, fibers to understand this problem. So, 3.141 multiplied by 5 square multiplied by 10 minus 8 L n divided by 1 L that will be the volume fraction of the fibers which we have calculated in the previous is 0.39. So, n is equal to 5 into 10 power 5. Okay. So, 5 lakh fibers are needed of 10 micron diameter okay, uh, for this uh, bone plate of 1 centimeter square area to achieve a volume fraction of 0.39. You understand? So, um, cross section of a bone plate is 1 centimeter square. Uh, if I take length of the bone plate is L, 1 into uh, L will be the volume. Um, take one fiber. Uh, pi r square L, uh, r is 5 microns, so pi into r square phi square, this is converting the um, micron into centimeters, okay. uh, as you know 10 power 4, uh, micron is 1 centimeter, okay. that is why you got 10 power minus 8 L, there are n fibers, so we have put n here. Now, this term divided by this term should give you 0.39, so from there we can calculate n. So, I need 5 lakhs fibers to um, achieve a volume fraction of 0.39 okay, if the cross sectional area of the bone plate is 1 centimeter square. Okay. Uh, third part, how much stress in the fiber direction can the bone plate take? Okay, stress, same thing like I said before, uh, 0.39 is a volume fraction of your uh, um, fibers. So, 0.61 will be the volume of PMMA, uh, 5000 is the um, strength of the carbon fiber that is stress, 70 mega Pascal is that of PMMA. So, we use the same mixture rules. Um, so, 5000 into 0.39 plus 70 into 0.61 that will give you 1992 okay, mega Pascal. Okay. That will be the stress this uh, whole bone plate will take. Uh, but of course, you need to assume, you need to consider that the fibers are all aligned in the same direction um, as your bone plate. But in reality, some of the fibers may not be aligned, so they will not be able to take in the same uh, force. Only the fraction um, that is aligned will take in the force, whereas those that are not aligned will take in much lesser force. Okay. So, in reality, uh, the stress, the um, composite may take in may be much lesser than this. This could be the best case scenario. Okay. So, with that uh, we conclude uh, uh, on the topic of uh, composites and uh, blends, polymer based blends as well as uh, polymer and inorganic material uh, based composites. Thank you very much for your time.